You will now be placed into the conference. Hello, this is Reverend Green. Oh, okay. We'll get, we'll get started as soon as everyone is settled. Can you hear me okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Great. get started at 635 then so everybody has a minute to get settled. Nancy, they said we don't have to get like we can be a normal distance. They said it for that. I know for me, oh. I'm like I get like right up in it. But <laughs> <laughs> said you should be able to sit comfortably and be heard. Okay, thank you. So um, this is our diversity commission meeting and uh, we're starting at 635 and I'd like to open it up with um, first uh, asking our fire and police commissioners to please introduce themselves. I know they're here as our guests, but if you wouldn't mind uh, just one by one coming up um, and just stating your name. Tony Loretto, I'm the uh, secretary to the commission. Thank you. Hello, uh, Ana Espinosa, I'm one of the commissioners. Alice Solis, and I'm one of the commissioners. Thank you, welcome Thank you everyone. And then next, if we could please have our uh, diversity commissioners introduce themselves, and we also have one who has called in. Hi everyone, Nancy Rodriguez, I'm one of the uh, members. Hello everybody, my name is Jesus O. Ramirez, I'm also one of the members. I'm Andrea Monday, Chair. 
Alicia Ruiz, uh, City Council Liaison, and Reverend? Reverend Green, uh, Commissioner Member. Thank you. Um, now I'm gonna open up our meeting to open forum. Uh, right now there's unfortunately no public um, attendees unless some of our uh, fire and police commissioners would like to make a statement or comment they'd like to share. I, yeah, I asked Tony if he would update. Uh, Tony did email that he was coming and I asked him if he would like to give an update on well, some I of could. our recommendations. Well, I could. I could give you an update. Uh, but I think uh, one of the things I'd like to do first is explain to you that since we met the last time, uh, I had told you that we were upgrading our rules and regulations. Uh, we have finally had a chance for the commission to get together uh, uh, in person because we felt it was necessary to do this in person, face to face, and get these rules and regs done the right way. We also had the board attorney come in and review it also with us. So with that being said, the rules and regs are about, uh, I would say probably about uh, two weeks away by the time we do all the crossing of the T's, dotting the I's and all that and making sure that everybody's in agreement. Uh, we've also added in our rules all the references to state statutes, the local ordinances and uh, uh, contracts between the police and fire unions. So that way you have a good meld of everything. Uh, it, everything is spelled out as much detail as possible. Try not to leave any room for ambiguity so there's no misinterpretation of what this says and what the intent of the rules and regs are uh, with that being said I mean I've talked to you guys a couple of times maybe too long so <laughs> what I would rather do is have the, the new commissioners meet you there's one new commissioner that could not make it tonight with family obligations that's Ken Wazak uh, but these are our two latest commissioners, and I'd like to have them come up and talk to you and see, get their view. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've served on this board now. Uh, it's been a year and a month. And within that year and month, we've been so busy. Uh, we got off the, I got off the ground running. Um, first thing we had to work uh, on was uh, firefighters had an exam. Uh, we are, our list was exhausted. The list is for two years. So our list was exhausted and we had to, um, we have a, a, a company that we, nothing touches our hands. We have someone come in and test. So we had to put out an application. I mean, it was fire. Yeah, it's just a fire contract. Yeah, it's, we, we had to do that. So that's what we're working on. We worked on that. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry, it was the police fire exam, which was held at Morton High School. Uh, I was happy to see that we had quite a bit of applicants. We had a very diverse pool of applicants. Um, women, uh, black, brown, white, it was very diverse and we're happy to see that. They looked very young, which was really, it was really funny because um, Morton High School was having their detention and I couldn't tell who was coming for detention <laughs> and who was coming for the police exam. So that's how young they looked to me. Um, I'm happy to report that most of the applicants had a passing grade. I think only four uh, applicants did not make the passing grade. We then, we went, uh, then went on to a uh, couple of procedural kinds of things that Tony has more familiarity with, but then we had to interview the candidates, and that was really interesting as well, uh, learn a little bit about them, and we had a scoring system, and. Uh, we completed that. Um, there's certain things that we also take into account, like if a uh, candidate is a Berlin resident, if they have military service, and if they have what their educational background is. So those are kinds of points that are added on. Uh, again, that's up to Tony to make sure the, pipe, the paperwork is filled out properly. So that's, that was a major, one of the major things we've accomplished. Uh, in the meantime, I don't know if you're aware, but we have to become certified. Uh, I was able to, in November, attend certification, and there's a five module process or certification. I was able to complete two of the modules, but because of everything that's going on, uh, we, the May uh, conference was canceled. So I'm currently with the two, um, doing two modules. Uh, I just want you to, to let you know that we are, 
working as best we can and we're trying to get certified, we're trying to get qualified. Some of the um, modules t uh, talked about testing, inter testing uh, interviews. Um, there was so many different aspects of just being a Berwyn, uh, police and fire commissioner. So we worked on that. Um, we also just started, as Tony said, rules and regulations because we are a new board we, we needed to go over rules and regs, and that was pretty extensive. Uh, we hired a new attorney. That was another thing we accomplished. Uh, rules and regs took about two to three hours because uh, Tony and the attorney had already put together, and we went pretty much line by line through the whole rules and reg regs packet. Um, now the next thing we're gonna undertake is, the uh, now it's time for police, uh, Firefighters, I'm sorry, for firefighters to get, again, the list has exhausted. So now we have, we have to start that whole new process with firefighters. One of the things we have done with the firefighters is that uh, through the Berwyn Development Corporation, they were able to put together, help us put together a marketing piece. We think it's important that our community, the people that serve our community, our firefighters, um, also look like our community. So that's one of our aims and goals is to make a marketing piece to put out there that will attract, first of all, higher caliber uh, candidates and then uh, candidates of color, women. So that's one of our priorities. Um, unfortunately, because of everything that's going on, the marketing piece was put together a little bit uh, quicker than anticipated, but yet, yet it's out there. And uh, I think candidates have through July 25th, Tony to apply and then we'll start with the next set of steps. So again, uh, we've been very busy. Um, we appreciate any input that you may have. Um, I know after rules and regs, we do have some recommendations for the mayor, which um, that's in the works. Again, we're just trying to attract the best possible candidates to work in our city and hope that they're as interested and you know, care and love our city as much as we do. So that's pretty much it, unless you guys have uh, any questions of me. Anna, the, the marketing piece that you said, is that specifically for fire or is that fire That is for fire and police? Pardon? Um, are you gonna do a similar thing with police um, to try to market in um, a way that will attract a more varied candidate? Yes. Okay. But again, I think Tony could talk a little bit more about that because again of COVID and because everything that's happening, Yeah. We. I think the piece, it needs a little bit more, but you, maybe you can tell well, a little bit. Well, here's what happened. Uh, our list has expired. We exhausted every candidate on that list. Mm -hmm. And when that, when that happens, by law, we have to have a, an established eligibility list every two years. Well, this list wasn't ex due to expire until January. So we had a little bit of time to work on this, this marketing piece at the time before gotcha. the COVID and before the time that the list expired. When the list got expired due to emergency hirings that we had to put through for uh, people who have left the job, uh, it rushed our process. So we've already got one piece out there. The, the Bourbon Development Corporation is doing another uh, video this week uh, of uh, a day in the life of the firefighter, or I don't know how they're going to market it or how, what their scheme is. We kind of let them have a free hand, let them look at it through their eyes, what do you see, you know? And when I had this all done, the idea was to turn to you guys and say, this came from you. This was one of your ideas, help us market it. So once it gets done and once it's finalized, the application is already out there, it's online. All the requirements are on there. Uh, we had to relax some of the requirements, but they're all out there. Um, I shouldn't say relax, we had to relax the deadline on it some of the testing they can't do right now because it's not open for it. So when it's all done, uh, this video piece, I'm gonna definitely send it to, to you guys and, and say, help us market. Because I can't advertise in colleges. They're not open. I can't advertise in our normal spots. So. Yeah, we would love mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. One um, of the, if oh, I may add my two cents, uh, regarding marketing, I attend uh, Morton College. I'm a, nurse, yes. I'm a nursing student. 
And I'm, I was happy to see when uh, the, the fire uh, students were taking their tests and they were getting ready from all over the place. And the parking lot was almost uh, half full of all these students. Yep. And I was very happy to know that uh, Berwyn had, was there uh, representing uh, the fire. Uh, now, regarding marketing, yes, it is closed for now. But you have colleges coming from all over the place, uh, Benedictine, uh, UIC, Purdue, it does, it, all these colleges coming every single day, putting their table with their pamphlets right at the, uh, at the lobby where students are going in and out. Okay. I have never seen from, not, not necessarily Berwyn, just any, whether Chicago, Cicero, nobody from fire or police having a desk and I've been at, at uh, Morton for six years, okay, since starting my prerequisites. So that would, once the college opens, that would be something good, not only at Morton College, it could be at the yeah. Chicago City Colleges, it could be uh, uh, DuPage, uh, sure. uh, College of DuPage, it could be any other, uh, where you have an, somebody, somebody physically at the location with pamphlets introducing yourself that you are Right. leading uh, candidates for either fire or for police. Normally we do that with all the colleges, mostly community colleges, that have a fire science program. Okay. Uh, well maybe what you don't know, if I didn't mention it before, uh, the emergency medical technician, EMT, mm -hmm. that class that is at Morton is taught at our North Berwyn, mm -hmm. in uh, the North Station in Berwyn. And it's our people teaching them, our firemen. Right now? The right way, now. But, but right now the way that the for colleges, for people who are going to be graduating in 2021, or right now in 2020, they're already graduated, but they have not picked out a college yet to uh, go after their associate, uh, their bachelor's. Right. They already got their associates. They are marketing marketing online through the college. Yes, you are not there physically, but they're still marketing. They don't have a table at the lobby, but they have a table online through the college. So maybe you can contact whatever college you want to market through. Uh, and it, it, you, you are able, because we get all those emails every single day from the colleges wanting us to go to their college. Well, so. and that's kind of the reason why we partnered with the BDC, Forum mm -hmm. Development Corp. They have marketing specialists. Mm -hmm. We're not marketing specialists. Yeah. You know, they're, they're working on the, on the, uh, um, the um, social network side of it, which I'm not good at. I can. <laughs> so we could, it's, yeah, it's, we could definitely. We would, you know, I want to get to some other things, but we sure. definitely would love to collaborate on helping you market that. Can we bring Alice up? Yeah, yeah. She's absolutely. our newest. Yeah, please. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm not going to say much because I've just started. I believe I joined the commission board right before the pandemic, so in March. Um, and so far, I am so excited to serve on the board. And my background is mental health, so I was a therapist before this. Um, and so that's something that I can bring to the table. And also being African American, I think that's a different perspective I can bring to the commission board, especially during these times. Um, we kind of need everybody from different backgrounds to bring their perspective, especially being the role that we have that's very important to choose who we're going to have serve on our police and fire you know, uh, departments. And we need people that do represent all of us mm -hmm. as citizens of Berwyn. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Um, so now we're gonna move into our uh, public comments that were sent to us via email. And Andrea's gonna go ahead and read those. We had how many, two or three? Yeah, I think three. We had three um, emails sent to us on public statements from Berwyn residents that would like to be read today. I'm going to try to read this with my foggy glasses. <laughs> um, okay, so this one is from Benjamin Henning. Berwyn Diversity Commission. My name is Benjamin Henning, and I reside at 1926 Wisconsin Avenue with my wife. As you are in active conversations with the Berwyn Police Department regarding policies and procedures, I ask that you take up the issue of how members of the Berwyn Police Department allow groups of armed citizens to break curfew in Berwyn on the evening of 6-1 and the implications of that for not only myself as a black man, but our black neighbors as well. The Berwyn Police Department did a wonderful tactical job keeping our community relatively safe while our immediate neighbor, immediately neighboring communities suffered from widespread looting and even fatal violence. 
It was an impressive display of planning and coordination, and we should all be grateful to the Burwin Police Department's res resourcefulness and action in that regard. On that night of June 1st, though, as Burwin Police Department set up a barrier on CIRMAC between Harvey and Lombard, many residents came out after curfew, including at least one group of young men armed with bats, pipes, boards, at least one with nails through it, under the guise of, quote, protecting our neighborhood, unquote. I was surprised and disappointed to see the Berwyn Police Department seem to welcome this, these vigilantes, even going so far as posing for pictures with them. This all played out for public consumption via Facebook live stream, as well as several reports heard through the scanner. Quote, group of men with baseball bats cited at, unquote. This action by the police at that location is troubling for me for the following reasons, and it begs the following questions of the Berwyn Police Department. One, was there an established curfew designed, there was an established curfew designed to help BPD have clear streets in order to best prevent damage and mayhem in Berwyn. Why was it not enforced? What basis did the officers at that location use to ignore these particular curfew violators? Was that tactic acceptance of curfew violation officially stated? Did the Berwyn Police Department brass condone or support it? And two, first responders get overwhelming support from our city and our city council. The majority of our budget is for police and fire. Requests for people, tools, and training are overwhelmingly supported nearly every time by our proxies and the city council. Is Berwyn Police Department not able to keep our streets safe enough without armed citizens patrolling? Do you imagine that these group of citizens made the streets more safe for Berwyn residents? If not, why were they allowed? Do you imagine that the vigilantes are able to make appropriate use of force judgment during a time of unrest? If not, how would those mistakes have reflected legally or PR wise on Berwyn? If allowing the vigilantes to break curfew was ill-advised and not supported by BPD higher ups, what action will be taken to let rank and file officers know that and or be held accountable? Three, whether intended or not, there was a message sent to Berwyn's black community. On social media the next day, we heard from many black neighbors that they didn't feel safe going in and from their homes, that they question whether they are welcome in our community. This is unfortunate and unacceptable. What will BPD do to overcome this impression and help black Berwyners know that they will receive equal protection from our police department? I look forward to hearing back with a response that addressed the above questions. Hope, Benjamin Henning. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, we're gonna go through and read everybody's and then we'll discuss things. Whew, let me catch my breath. You, I mean, you could take it off while you're speaking. Can I? Whew. I know it's hard to talk with it on, especially yeah. with glasses. Okay, this one is from Rafael Padilla. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to have a dialogue at the local government level on diversity and inclusion. The whole of our country continues to grapple with deep unrest surrounding issues of race, racial inequality. I commend the city of Berwyn for initiating this diversity commission and hope there is a positive outcome. The real test will be the outcome of the commission's findings and recommendations to ensure we encourage a diver, diverse workforce and provide both current and prospective employees with equal opportunities for advancement. What does diversity and inclusion mean? Berwyn has undoubtedly a diverse makeup of residents. However, Berwyn will, will never be inclusive until the various positions in our government, public works, and services reflect the people who live here. The diversity and inclusion committee must review the city's hiring practices of fire department, police department, and director and deputy level positions, as well as board members and chairperson positions. Berwyn's fire department and police department are primarily composed of individuals who do not live in Berwyn, are male and white. The go-to response from Berwyn city officials is that, quote, we hire the most qualified individuals, unquote, which somehow makes it okay to have a workforce that is not inclusive. I do not doubt that the Semaglias or Manfredinis, thank you, <laughs> are qualified, my question is how have those oppor these opportunities been provided and have they been inclusive? Why have we not had a Berwyn Fire Department and Berwyn Police Department work with Morton High School or Morton College, which we heard they do, to promote and encourage its next generation to become civil servants and well-paid jobs? 
Why do we allow the cover of most qualified to prevent inclusivity and give well-paid and honorable careers to a select group of individuals who will live in the surrounding collar counties of Cook? Berwyn city government fares no better when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Sure, we can point to our current aldermen who have been to date make up the most, the more diverse groups in our city's history. We can point to the administrative staff who is primarily Hispanic, but we start looking at who holds the director level positions in our city government, public works, park district, etc. We will not be inclusive. Even board chairpersons that oversee many of the city's governmental services are comprised of the same individuals working other high level positions in Berwyn. How do these opportunities remain with a few, quote, qualified, unquote, individuals? The city of Berwyn needs to have a come to Jesus moment before we can consider ourselves diverse and inclusive. Um, and then he provided a PDF of a Smith, Gamble, and Russell Law LLC best practices for diversity and inclusion, um, which we'll forward to all the commissioners. Thank you, Raphael. We got a question from an Erica Mendoza. Um, will there be any more hiring for police officers anytime soon? I know the first seven on the list were hired, but have not seen, but not sent to the academy. That I don't know the, we don't know the answer of, but you can answer that. Very simple, yes, the first seven were hired. We can't send them to the academy because the academy is not in process because of COVID. Once they get the academy up and running, then we can put people into the academy and get them going. After that happens, and the police chief decides that he's, he's ready, it, it needs more, I shouldn't say, that's a bad way to say. Once there are more openings on the police department, then we can fill those vacancies. But until the vacancy is open, we cannot fill it. That's by contract, that's by law. So, and I just wanna reiterate what you've shared in the past. And because they've been asked to join, they now have to go through the academy. It does not still mean that they're officially employed. They still have to go through the entire process before they're hired on, correct? It's still a probationary process. And, and to be honest with you, even the next candidates that are on the list, we've started their backgrounds, because that takes a long time. So we've started the background process and the polygraph. The next step that comes after that, if they pass those requirements, then we can give them a, what's called a conditional offer of employment, which means if you can pass the, uh, the psychological exam and the physical exam, now you'd be hired as a probationary police or firefighter, in this case, police officer. So then, then they go into the probationary part and then they start to pass the academy. They don't pass the academy, go to the next person on the list. So because you filled, let's say, for example, the 10 vacancies now with the 10 individuals, they haven't completely been onboarded. So technically until they pass this in every point and phase of this process, Correct. you cannot bring on more, or, nor do you know you have completely filled those positions until the process well, has been completed. Well, once we get them into the academy, but there has to be an opening on the department. Somebody either has to retire or other circumstances, you know, get injured or worse then there has to be an opening. We just can't hire people and put them on the department. That's not, that's not the process at all. So they're becoming our go-to list when vacancies become available. That's why, that's why you establish an eligibility list. That is what the law requires. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Thank and the you. new list is up now. This list will expire, I believe in February of 21. So that means six months prior to that, we start our testing process for police officers. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So typically in open forum, um, we, we, we usually have individuals here to express their, their statements um, in, in person. Because they're not here right now, um, usually we go on into our agenda immediately after that. So I'm not sure if Andrew wants to have any discussion about those or to just share it with all the commissioners and have it um, discussed at the next meeting. Uh, I'm I'm open to. I think. I think we got some really really good questions, and um, 
-hmm. I think if we responded now, we wouldn't be appropriately reflecting on those. Yes, because if we waited another 30 days, uh, we're not answering on these citizens' uh, questions, and they want to answer now, not in 30 days, where we have a chance to think about what we're going to say to poli uh, politically correct. No, we want to give them an answer you wanna, now. You want to talk about these things now? Yeah, we can. Nancy, how do you feel? I believe we... Yeah, hello, Reverend Green. Can I chime in? Is yeah. Okay? Sure. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, uh, regarding a, um, a couple of the questions, I think, it, I think it would be appropriate to hear some of the response from the police department. Because okay. I think, if I'm not mistaken, what I'm hearing on this thing is that some of that is directed to the police department. Not directed to us as a commission. We asking questions of the police department, mm -hmm. and if the police department is present, I think this is it'll give us an opportunity to respond back to them if we hear from the police department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I also agree. Uh, uh, most of those questions are for the police department, not so much for us, since we wouldn't have the answer we would have to actually go back to those questions and get them an answer later anyway. Mm -hmm. We'd have to go to the police department to get the answers and provide them. Yeah. Um, I oh, can... I'm sorry. Okay, again, I'm sorry. I thought we had... Go ahead. I thought a few people from the police department. Oh, they're... Today. Doris, they're from the Police and Fire Commission. So they do, oh, they do the okay. hiring and disciplinary. Okay. All yeah, right. it's sorry. Tony, Tony Laredo here sorry. and the... Um, I, I mean, I will definitely like empathize with a lot of the comments that we got and um, am equally concerned with what I saw on June 1st. And um, I just want the people who did write in to us to know like we hear you um, and that we are also concerned with these things. Um, is anybody else that's the only comment that i want to make but then i want to have time to reflect and maybe we need to as a diversity commission um set up some sort of town hall with the police department because it seems like a lot of our residents have questions for the police department so maybe that's something we can consider facilitating um to get obviously covid <laughs> i don't know we'd have to do it outside or something but um i don't want I appreciate everyone's comments, and those are also things that concerned me. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you guys those have are any sentiments to echo or those are concerns uh, to myself. On the first, um, and second, and third, I was not here in Berwyn. I was uh, on a pre-planned trip. I was out right outside Seattle, so I was watching everything um, online and on TV. What was going on in Cicero and here in Berwyn? So, uh, regarding uh, those allegations about citizens uh, bringing out their guns and bats and uh, things like that. I would also like to get more information on it because well, I was not here, so I cannot say that yes, uh, but I do, uh, I'm, I'm one of those essential workers that sometimes come at one or two in the morning. So I have to go past curfew when curfew was established. But uh, in my case, I never saw anybody, but if, if there, that was a case, yes, that's a question for the police department that should be answered to not only uh, us at the Diversity Commission, but to all residents of the city of Berwyn. I believe we all want to feel safe as residents, you know, if you're out driving. And I think the bottom, the root of, of all those questions is that we all want to feel safe and protected. And maybe a good question is how, what do they have in practice or what do they have in practice during that time to protect the, the, the citizens of, of Berwyn? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's one of the questions we would want to ask. What, obviously, Sister was hit first. So we, I can, maybe we had a little bit more time to prepare, I, I don't know. Um, so maybe those are questions we should ask the police department to find out how or uh, what they had in place to be ready for mm -hmm. those riots and how they were handling them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds well, like we've... You know, Go ahead, Doris. I would like to change. Okay. I would like to kind of give a comment on the first uh, letter that was read, where, where it talked about police officers taking pictures with vigilantes. Vigilantes. Like, vigilantes. Taking pictures. Yeah, taking pictures with people that you know. Because I'm, I'm, I represent black families in my in my community, 
And uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure. I don't know who wrote that, but I would be very disappointed to know that our police were, any police officer in Berlin was actually supporting something like that. Very disappointed to hear that. So, And I would like to hear what the police department's response would be to that, because that's disturbing to me. So I think we all would like a response from the police department about yes. that specific night. Okay, for sure. Um, and then just a, a little response to um, Raphael, um, you know, definitely want to think about a lot of the things that you said, um, hopefully you're watching. Um, but just, you know, questions of um, the, the makeup of our leadership is definitely something that this commission is committed to looking into. Um, the police department is the first department that we're looking into, but certainly these are exactly the type of issues that we wanna tackle. Um, so I, I appreciate your letter and hope that we can, can serve the community in that way. Um, that's it for our open forum, unless anybody else. Um, I'll just add a couple comments um, about all of this. So as, as an alderman, I did reach out to my black families in my ward because I myself um, will have to be really candid that I did have a high level of anxiety during the entire situation that occurred. It wasn't just uh, for our, our community. It was mainly for our community, but it was also nationwide that this was that there was so much um, going on at one time. Um, so I did feel the need to reach out to my black families, the ones that I'm connected to, because I'm not connected to everyone in my ward, but ones that I do have relationships with, I did reach out to them and call them and ask them how they were doing. Um, and most of them felt okay. They were on high alert, like many of us. But I did have one mother, single mom, reach out to me. And my heart broke during my conversation with her because she did feel alarmed, she did have high anxiety, and she had a lot of fear for her children, more than for herself, but her children. Even though they're grown, she felt concerned for her grown black children. Um, and she wanted to know, you know, what were we doing about this? Um, so whether it's true or not, because Facebook is, I mean, you can't really hold people's feet to the fire unless you're experiencing it yourself. It was so Facebook is though. really, and then there was so many people, like who's who and all of this stuff that's going on, right? Do we actually see badges and all of that? But, but when you have, my whole point is that when you have a family that reaches out, of you, reaches out to you because of fear, then we need to be concerned. We need to be concerned to make sure that we're checking all our boxes that all our T's are crossed and all our I's are dotted, right? And we're, and we're not flawless. We're not a flawless community. We, we, we are a work in progress like everyone else. So I, I want individuals to know that if this has occurred, there definitely is going to be radar on it. There's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to be looked into, but it also has to be looked at from a factual point, right? Um, and we want them to know that, I want them to know as an alderman and a representative of the city, that every family, no matter what color, and especially our black families during this time, need to feel comfortable living here. Yeah. Yes. It, it need to feel very comfortable living here. So I just wanted to add that. Um, it definitely did. There is no if. It definitely. It's. It was live streamed on Facebook. I have the video that I can can share with everybody. And yeah, you can. There's badges. There's. <laughs> it's. It's pretty. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, like it's there. there. It's there. Again, things like that um, that's been videoed and all of that should be brought to the attention of the police department because um, we can talk about it, but if it's not brought to the police department, even even if that means another meeting, and I don't think things like this should wait a whole month, uh, it should be brought to someone's attention that that happened because this, that those are some of the things, this is one of the things that's very disturbing to African black families. If you see things like that, that is, it's horrible to see that because you don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Okay, do you guys are ready to move on to the next agenda yes. item, which is our conversation? So our last meeting was before COVID, um, and it was a meeting with the Berwyn Police Department, and the 
for when police and fire commission mm -hmm. um, we have not had a chance to even reflect on that meeting or follow up with each other since we don't talk about these issues outside of <laughs> these live uh, situations or outside of our meetings so um, does anybody want to go first with giving their reflections on that meeting or their feelings um, I would like all of us to have the opportunity to, to speak, so let's just be conscious of that. But would anybody like to take the floor first? I've lived in Berwyn since 1993. In my lifetime, I have been in 13 incidents of police brutality where police have done things to me, whether putting a gun in my, not, I'm not talking about Ber the Berwyn Police Department, I'm talking about uh, police departments outside, whether Chicago, LA, Mexico, where I've had a gun in my mouth, where I've had a neck in, in uh, their knee in my neck, where I was pulled out of the car in 20 below weather while my wife, my then wife and my child were in the car and they were seeing. So I've, I've been and I know and I feel what many people have felt and continue to feel by different police departments. Last meeting, I was happy. I was uh, content. Uh, Obviously, there's still continuous work that can be done in, uh, in our Berwyn Police Department, but I was satisfied with the answers from our chief and our deputy chief and everybody else who was at the table. Well, uh, when we did our meeting here in the city hall with uh, Mayor Lovero and all the aldermen, we found that there was no racial profiling here in the city of Berwyn. Now, can it happen in the future? Well, that's what we're trying to prevent, uh, at least from the Diversity uh, Commission. We want to continue working and if there's anything out there, is there if there's anybody out there that it feels they were um, profiled, we want to know because we want to solve or we want to take care of those things so they do not happen again if they happen. For now, I was satisfied by the chief, by the deputy chief, and everybody else at the table. Nancy, do you want to? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's been a while, like you mentioned. Yes. So many things have happened since since that meeting. Um, I think everybody's more focused with COVID and what's happened with the riots that just happened. During that meeting, I, I, I was glad that they were open to meeting with us. That's a, a really good step to start and having being open to having a conversation and listening to each other. I think it's the first step to making progress and making changes and feeling part of a community and um, feeling integrated into a community and working together to, uh, to make changes or uh, learn uh, different ideas and um, different types of um, cultures that make up Berwyn. Uh, I see it more and more, you know, when I'm walking, driving, and I see that a lot. So from, the, from that meeting that we had, um, I was glad that they answered all our questions. Um, I don't have the notes from that meeting with me today. Um, I, I know one of the, the questions I think we've been asking is um, when they hire police officers, do they get any points for being bilingual? Or, and I believe, if I remember correctly, and you can correct me, or, or the commissioners can correct me, I don't believe they get any any extra points. And um, you know, I don't know if that made any. Uh, if there was a reason behind it. I can't recall at the moment. By state statute, under police officers, mm -hmm. there's only certain points that you can give for preference points. I mean, this is, we just talked about this with the attorney because we were trying to figure out how to do it. So one of the problems is everything that we do as commissions, I should say that they do, the, the decisions that they are making are based on what they can see as proof. Show me your high school diploma. Mm -hmm. Show me your, your birth certificate. Show me your, uh, uh, your degree and associate's degree. It all has to be proved. You're bilingual. What language? Prove it. I can't prove it. So we asked the attorney, how do we do this? It has to be through an accredited program that says you can speak another language. Otherwise, how do we prove it? You know, I, there are two commissioners that can speak Spanish. I don't think anybody speaks any other languages. 
So do we give preference points for Polish? Do we give preference points for Russian? Do we give preference points for name the language? How do we do it? That's the, that's the problem that we wrestle with is how do we do it? How do we prove it? Just like we can say, prove your residency. We have to be able to prove it. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then the commission is guilty of putting somebody on and giving preference points and not being able to prove it. Mm -hmm. I can't say that that was one of our discussions with the rules and regs, and that's something we're looking into. Uh, possibly a competency test, a degree. So that is one of the things we are exploring because we do feel it's important that um, our residents, again, that police force reflects our residents. And if we have someone who does speak Spanish or Italian or whatever the language is, and it's an asset to our community and it may help one of our residents, you know, we are looking seriously into that. And like Tony said, we just can't, you tell me you speak Spanish, you know, do we take you at your word or how do we do that? And one of the things is either a competency, competency test or some kind of degree in that language. And that's, again, that is one of our discussions right awesome. now. Awesome. Great, thank you. Great, thank you. Did, so, yeah, yeah, you wanna oh, continue? Just, no, I'm, I'm pretty much done. That was one. Okay. That was one of my uh, my questions that I had in mind, which I'm, I'm happy to hear that those you guys are having talks about it because I think we keep repeating ourselves that we want our leaders and our police force and our firefighters to mirror in some way the community in Berwyn, and I think that would be a great step to to accomplish. And um, in terms of the meeting, I was happy that they were open to meeting with us, that uh, they provided a lot of the information we asked, and um, obviously it's work in progress. Thank you, Nancy. Doris, do, would you like to make any comments about our meeting with the police department and police and fire commission? Oh, okay, yes. Um, I, I really enjoyed the tour, being able to go around and see all the different departments at the police department. I, I had never seen all of that. Going into each little area and getting a clear understanding of what happens with the youth and the, how they separate different things and make sure that everyone is safe when they people are brought in for being locked or arrested. I thought that that was something well to see. And I was definitely, before COVID hit, looking forward to maybe going on one of the uh, ride alongs with uh, some of the police of it is to see what it what it looks like from their end because you know I'm sure they have a pad just like we do some of us from the community so I thought that that was very interesting to to get a chance to see the the different things that I saw and the questions answer being able to answer some of our questions and one of my one of my concerns um, was making sure that we had diversity on the commission and I'm happy to hear that they have brought on someone from African American or Black or whatever to choose to be called in this hour. So I'm happy to know that that's happening. And um, yeah, I thought, I thought the meeting went well. I'm sure there's a lot of things we're gonna have to follow up now that we've had different things. While we didn't find anything in Berlin doing our research that we did, we, it didn't mean that it wasn't happening. It's just that we didn't find it. So, um, and going forward, I think we need to kind of follow up. I'm definitely interested in following up with the person that wrote that letter because I would like to see the video for myself so I can kind of see what's the next step on that because something has to be done. Thank you, Doris. Do you have any comments? You know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go first? <laughs> do you want to go first? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> you, know, you guys I'm, know I me will. well enough you now. Can, you <laughs> the last one. Um, you want to go? Yeah. Okay. So I would, I would like to just reflect and share um, my perception of our meeting. I think overall the meeting went uh, well for a first meeting with the police department, the, the commanders in chief, so to speak. I did feel like there was a couple of things that we did get a little bit of resistance on that I feel that I, I, I still can't wrap my head around it as to why, because I feel that they were very simple requests. In my opinion, they're simple requests, 
and they're not anything that requires anything outside of their current resources. Um, so it doesn't require funding, it doesn't require, well, I'll take that back. Yes, it does, I apologize. Um, but one of them that I think is the most simplest one that I, I, again, can't wrap my head as to why the answer was negative, but it was like putting, um, allowing the complaint process to be on their website so that individuals do not have to, the first process or first step in filing a complaint is to walk into the police department. To me, that just sounds like sending the sheep into the lion's den. Um, I, I find that difficult. And I mean, you have to be very strong-willed person and a very confident person to walk into that type of situation and complain about somebody's when you're in their house, so to speak. So I feel that that process definitely, and if our suggestion of having it on the website so that individuals can at least start the process on the web page. Obviously, there's more than just writing something on, you know, in, in a form on the website. There's a lot more to it than that. But I'm talking about just initiating it, just being able to, to file a complaint. Of course, all the legwork has to go into it in order to verify it and, and you know, review it and research it and all of that. I'm not... Um, I am not watering down that process. I'm just saying that I think that that is very intimidating to ask someone to walk into the lion's den and have to complain about somebody in their own house. So whether our recommendations considered or not, I would really love for them to review that and come up with a better suggestion because I think right now the one that they have is very flawed and very intimidating. So that's one thing. The other thing is I know that um, it's very complicated with the uh, bargaining uh, agreements and unions and salaries and overtime and, and the list goes on, which goes into funding, right? And funding is always a scarcity no matter what area you're talking about. But I still feel strongly that having in-person training direct one-on-one -on -one in a you know classroom setting or, or whatever that may be, but I think Every three years to ask for that, it's not asking a lot. Now, if we ask for it annually, I think that's intense. I think that's huge. But I think every three years, I think every three years for live, hands-on classroom instruction, not classroom, but hands-on training about implicit bias, about you know all these other things that are highly important right now. Um, you know, since, you know I, I just think it's really critical. And I think that that is something, again, if our recommendation's not being considered, I think that they need to come back with some type of response as to how they can make it happen in another fashion. So those are my two take homes that I really feel that need to be continually discussed until there's an outcome that I feel is satisfactory. So that's my input, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I wanna say, um, you know, I've been going through our recommendations and just kind of analyzing where we're at with things. And obviously not all of our recommendations are gonna be taken because we're not professionals in policing. And some of these, there was absolutely reasons why it wouldn't work or whatever. Um, I do wanna thank um, the mayor that our recommendation to the mayor's office was to put out a statement on the website, which he did almost immediately. Um, so I do have that statement, which I think we've all seen and was sent to. Um, so I wanna thank him for that. I do wanna thank the Police and Fire Commission um, that we have not had to like push, I guess, push them to um, review our recommendations and to really be proactive about it. So I, I just really appreciate that. And just like you showing up to our meetings and being so engaged with this process is just huge. Um, I think almost all of our recommendations, you've at least, you've, almost, you've either implemented, are implementing, or you've had, you know, just like a really reasonable <laughs> discussion with us about why it's not practical yet or, or such things. So um, I would love if we could get all of that in writing. I know you said that you're, in a couple weeks, the rules and regulations would be done, but um, just an account of our recommendations and what you've done, because I know that you've done quite a bit, and I would love to be able to show that to the, the community that, you know, actionable things are happening. So in light of that, the way I'd answer that is, once the board gets the approval of the rules and regulations, before it goes anywhere else, we have to publicly display it for 10 days. 
and it goes on display for 10 days. After that, then the board can ratify it. But once that is done, there are some questions on there that we need to get approval of city council for uh, if we want to change. But we still want to research, because like I said, one of the things was about a, a, a language, speaking of the language. We can't arbitrarily just put that in. Now what the commissioners used to do is put it in on their commission points, but you didn't, there's no, again, there's no proof of that. And everything that they do has to have proof so that the, nobody can come back to them and say you did it wrong. Mm -hmm. So uh, once we put it on display for 10 days, I will notify you awesome. to make sure that you see it. Uh, again, that's not, it will not be a ratified rules and regs until that is done. And then our rules and regs will be permanently posted online for everyone to see up front. Tony, we also made a recommendation to um, for the psychological screening that the police officers go through um, during their application process that more screening questions be added um, about like screening for um, racism and sure. implicit bias. And you, I know that you had mentioned to me that you had also talked to the people who do our screening to add those, is that right? Well, yes and no. What I did was, I, I think I explained to you that the way the psychologist does the screening, he has a, a basic set of questions. And by the way, we use two different psychologists. Okay. We don't just send everybody to the same place. Yeah. Um, we, uh, the, the questions are asked in a format. He has, a, I forget the name of the format that he uses. Do you know it, Alice? MMPI, there you go. Uh, they ask these questions, and then if there's a hit on, on one of those questions, the psychologist then will take that one a little further and say, where does this go? How do, what is this person doing? If we see things on Facebook that people post on their own personal websites, and we say, that's a little bit of tendency to violence, you know, maybe we don't want that candidate. That's what the commission gets to do. That's how... If you would like, and I think it might be a good idea, uh, I could ask at least one of the psychologists to come in uh, and, and give you an idea of what it's like to go through the screening process. And then if you have questions there, I mean, I don't question per professionals, you know. Uh, that's why we got Alice on the board. <laughs> uh, uh, and Anna, because she's a teacher, so she made sure that, we, that I do all my, my math and arithmetic. Right, so. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I think that would be a reasonable request to, to ask him. I would love to learn more about that process. Of course, it would be on the commission's process. dime, I guess. We'd have to pay for him to come here. So. <laughs> but um, I, I think that would be a good way for you to see, too, what that part of the process is. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these things that you guys are bringing up and that you're, that our residents are bringing up are just, they don't know the process. They don't understand. They think that it's, you know, it's, it's a good old boy network and it's all, it's not. It, 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 there are rules and rigs. We have to follow state statutes. We have to follow federal laws. And the, it's the job of the commission to make sure that those rules and regs are followed from the statutes. And then we imply ours to them that's our job. Um, that's their job, is to make sure that the, the rules and regs are followed, not administered by the council, the mayor, the chief, nobody. That's the real reason. That's why you have an independent police and fire commission. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Very happy to see the new, would you like me to check on new commissioners. I, I would love that. Yeah, I would love to know more about the psychological screening process. All I would need then is a date that, that you'd be needing you the would, next time. Yes. Agreed? Yes. 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 Okay. All I need is a date for the next meeting. And okay. I can see if he's available, or if not, I'll get the other one. Yeah. But I have one That'd that we great. use right here in Berwyn. Awesome. So. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. I, I wrote out my statement because I'm like that. So um, here we go. Um, so thank you to um, the Fire and Police Commission. Um, I really appreciate you guys having these discussions with us um, and taking action. That's very important. Um, for the police department, um, I want to make it clear before I start <laughs> um, that desiring reform from police is not hating individual police officers. Desiring better training of police is not hating individual police officers. Desiring to reallocate money away from armed police and to unarmed responders is also not hate. I do not believe that all police officers are bad.
However, in policing, there can be no bad apples. And recognizing that police systems have created a culture that silences the good apples when they speak up is also not hating individual police officers. That is not what we're here for and not what I'm about to say. My general takeaway from our follow-up meeting with the Berwyn Police Department was that the leadership in the department feels that these things just won't happen here. What happened to George Floyd, just that would never happen here. What happened to Breonna Taylor would never happen here. That was the feeling that I got from our meeting. Um, I hoped that we had made it clear in our report that just because we didn't find evidence of a systemic racially pro racial profiling issue, um, I hoped we made it clear that um, that didn't mean that there was no urgency in making improvements. Um, I can't imagine any police department in the United States would look at what happened to George Floyd or Breonna Taylor and say, yeah, that could happen here. None of them are gonna say that. Um, so I think we should not be so naive to think that it couldn't happen here. Of course, I hope that it never would, but. Um, I personally felt that most of our recommendations to the Burton Police Department were met with a bit of, bit of defensiveness and a list of reasons why our recommendations were not feasible. While I understand that people on this commission do not know the day in, day out complications of policing, there were a significant amount of our recommendations that were based on research and professional consultations to this commission. Um, our true strongest suggestions, which were an in-person implicit bias training every three years and an online system to report an officer for misconduct were received with heavy pushback. I understand that there are complications in additional training, absolutely, but learning on a computer module once a year and having bias training only be a piece of that is just not enough. Um, concerning the attitude of we don't have a problem here in Berwyn, um, how would we really know? The current process for reporting an officer is intimidating and unaccessible. Um, the BPD can't refuse to reform on the basis of there being no problem here while simultaneously making it difficult to report a problem. Moving forward, I believe we need written responses to our recommendations. I believe we need to put a date on when we would like to receive those responses by, and that's something that we failed to do in our initial report. We never said we want the Berwyn Police Department to respond to this in six months or a year or whatever. We had no date on that. So, um, you know, I think we have to take that on as I'm saying that they haven't done anything. I realize we didn't give them a date to do so. Um, I also understand that COVID and our, and our current civil unrest has taken a lot of focus. Um, however, our recommendations were released in December of 2019 and some were as simple as posting policies on the Berwyn Police Department website. So I would like to see some action done. Um, I would like to thank our residents who took initiative to petition the Berwyn Police Department to comply with the eight can't wait policies and an effort to immediately reduce harm as a part of a continued process of analyzing our policing systems. Um, with the help of my husband, Kevin, who helps me a lot, <laughs> um, we reviewed the Berwyn Police Department's use of force policy and the Illinois use of force statute and did not see that Berwyn Police Department fully complies with each of those eight pieces. Um, but since our commission is here to represent the community, what I believe we need to do next is pause um, and consider facilitating a survey or a town hall meeting in order to assess the community's needs and feelings around police reform or defunding. Um, basically, I'm not here to do a lot of work that leads to no action. And I felt that um, in our meeting, there was too, too much pushback on taking actionable steps. Um, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, does anybody anybody have anything else before we move on to our next Don't agenda? Don't ask Robin if she's got any last comments. Doris, do you have any comments? No, I, I think you, you, you pretty much covered it. Things that I even had in mind, you spoke on it, so. And I did get a chance to review that eight can't wait, it won't wait, can't wait, get policy too, but I did not see um, where, just like you said, where we were doing here in Berlin, our police department was kind of doing quite a bit of those eight can't wait pieces. But no, I don't have anything else to say about it. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay. Sorry, guys. So, I know I'm hardcore. <laughs> Um, so moving on to our last agenda item, which is about um, basically the commission moving forward. So I would um, hope you don't mind. I'm gonna take my mask off. I always feel like I'm talking to myself when I'm talking through a mask. Um, so first and foremost, I want to thank you all. I don't know if you all realize, but July marks a year that this commission was created and approved by um, city council members. And um, I want to thank you all for taking this on, even the ones that are not here. I want to thank you all for taking on um, this role, and especially because it is a volunteer position. So I really um, appreciate your time and effort that you have invested into the commission. Um, my role on here has always been to be the city liaison. And really all I wanted to do was get you off the ground and empower you to do the best job possible. Um, and so tomorrow, the um, ordinance for it to be codified and actually becoming true and existing um, in the city of Berwyn, it's on the agenda tomorrow. So that means my job here is done. Um, I have done what I wanted to do, and it's time for me to step aside and allow the Diversity Commission to be exactly what we all shared we wanted it to be, and that was a, a committee that of residents for the residents, and to create a nonpartisan, open, safe environment for dialogue and for interaction for the, for the, the city of Ber, uh, Berwyn's residents. And so with that, I'm tipping my hat and I'm bowing out, but I did want to share a couple of um, ideas and perspectives that I have on our work thus far and some offer some suggestions on you all moving forward. And one is that I, I'm gonna be very candid and say that it really wasn't uh, fair to all of you to be deep dived, immersed into the, all of this. Um, it was a, 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 ta a large taking um, that you took on, but you all took it on um, seriously and you all did a wonderful job considering um, how you got involved and how quickly we took this on. In my eyes, this was never really the work that the Diversity Commission um, solely would do. So to me, as I mentioned, I, I really believe that in order for you to be strong in the community and in order for the community to be embracing of all of you is that you need to start building your relationships in the community. You need to have systems and you need to have a foundation and I'm really hoping that the next couple of months, it, that's a true focus for all of you to build and create. Meaning that for me, I think that there should be, um, there should be focus groups. There should be um, expert um, subject matter uh, individuals brought in and, and taught certain um, viewpoints and you know how to handle racism, how do you know you're being racist in your comments, and just to really educate and inform not only the commission, but the residents, the city of Berwyn, and staff and et cetera, right, all across the globe. Um, and so I really hope that this is something that you take into consideration for the next you know, year to come, because the first year was kind of like throwing the baby in the bathwater, and now it's time to really build a foundation that all of you can um, participate in, all of you can be um, growing with along with the city uh, residents. And of course, that can't be done without you know, systems and that can't, and systems can't exist without funding. And so that means asking, you know, possibly having a budget. One of the struggles that and Andrea and I had was simply just providing our statement and our meeting and our information in Spanish. We're not, you know, I'm, I'm not really considered bilingual. My Spanish is horrible but I can get by, but getting by when you're offering you know, pertinent information like this is not enough. So who does that? You know, that's something you have to outsource. Um, if you wanna market and you wanna hold focus groups and you wanna hold coffees and you wanna bring subject matter experts in, we're talking about funding here. So those are things that you definitely need to start considering for year two. And I hope that these are some of the things that you look um, into and have some serious dialogue about because I think that it's gonna be extremely important to have further along outcomes and measurables uh, for you to present to city council on things that are needed in the community. And I really hope that 
your focus moving forward is really derivative from the, from the city, from the residents. So giving them the opportunity to, to vocalize and share their concerns and ask questions and have open free dialogue. I hope that that's something that, uh, because the commission was really built for the residents and so your direction should be from the residents. And what, so it shouldn't be what each, you know, obviously you all have input, but I think that you're really here to represent the residents. And so the only way to do that is by hearing their voice, right? And so building upon those relationships is critical in order for you to get to that next level of having them feel comfortable to even reach out to you or Jesus or Reverend Green or whoever that may be. I mean, honestly, as a representative of the city, the, the woman that, the mother that reached out to me, she was hesitant. Like She's like, you know, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't know how to share this with you, but I, I have to be open and honest with you. And I was really grateful for that. But it took a lot of courage from her, right? She was extremely, she didn't know which direction to go in. And I think when residents and our families feel like that, there has to be somewhere that they know that they can go. And to me, that's all of you. So um, I apologize if I'm putting a lot on you and I'm, you know, really pressing upon you and, and giving you some big shoes to fill, but I, I, I wouldn't say this if I didn't believe all of you were up to the task. So on that note, I want to thank you all and good luck, but I'm always here to help in any way that I can, and I'm still the liaison, so any recommendation, recommendations that you make moving forward, and you all will send them to me, and then I will push forward on City Council for them. If I may okay. add something. Uh, this is Ellen Green because I did have a question, but I think we answered it at the end. Okay. Uh, my question was, is it, so are you saying that we no longer need the Council um, Member Green because of what she said? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 I just won't be present at your meetings because I think it's I think it's really important to show the nonpartisan of the diversity commission and me being on that doesn't do that but also th that was the reason why it was created right but I only stood on just to kind of get it going get it get it moving forward and now we've gotten to that point where tomorrow um, as long as it's codified it is it is law right and that was that was the one thing that I wanted to make sure happened for the commission. Well, thank you so much. I just, just wasn't clear what you meant by that. And you were kind of saying goodbye. I'm like, are you, do we not need a liaison? I, I thought we would always need some type of liaison to get things through. Absolutely. And that's what I'm here for. Yes. So I just won't attend the okay. meetings any longer. Mm -hmm. I got it. I understand. Okay. Makes sense. My um, I'm Jesus Ramirez. Uh, Reverend Green, I send hugs to you out there, wherever you are. Um, to my fellow commissioners and to you, Elder Woman uh, Ruiz, I, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be in this seat. As uh, uh, my other commissioners, I know they're thankful also. We have no political affiliation to you or to the mayor, to any of the other uh, uh, aldermen. Uh, me sitting here, not only do I want to represent the Hispanic community, I also want to represent the black community, the Caucasian community, the, it, it, the Native American, uh, Arab community, whoever. I'm, I'm not just representing a, a particular a culture. No, I'm representing everybody as a whole. Um, no, I'm not planning to run for a seat. I'm not trying to be politically correct. Constructive criticism from any other resident from Berwyn, not from Cicero, not from Chicago. I want constructive uh, criticism from other fellow residents. If I can say something, speak something, or bring some attention to something, please bring it to, not only to my attention, to any of uh, my, uh, our, our commissioners' attention, in the street, in, on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, however you wanna uh, bring it up to our attention. But when uh, out there, instead of uh, help, giving us information to help Berwyn, instead tries to put down uh, the commission that we are not worthy or how we were picked or do we have some connection to some uh, somebody in, in City Hall? No, we're, I'm just a resident and that's it. I have, I'm not, I don't vote for somebody. I'm not Democrat, I'm not Republic. I'm not, I'm just Jesus Ramirez, a commissioner. So I, the only question that I have for the next uh, uh, liaison is I want to make sure that if uh, we, uh, me or any of the commissioners continue we are not subjected or taken out because we don't feel this uh, in a particular way that uh, that either the police department or the fire department, wh whatever department, maybe doesn't like the way that commissioner spoke. So 
yes, they are able. They they will be able to be taken out for a just cause. I, as one of the commissioners, want to know what that just cause would be, because if, if maybe I, they don't like my fate or they don't like me wearing a suit or maybe whatever reason, uh, I don't want to be just not come to the next meeting because they didn't like me. They didn't like they didn't like my attitude. Uh, I need more. Um, instruction. We need more instruction because I don't want one of my fellow commissioners not to be here next month or in two months and I have no idea why. Just because that liaison, I'm not saying that liaison is going to be like that because you were very fair, Alicia. You were very I'm fair. I'm still the liaison, Jesse. She's gonna, <laughs> she's gonna, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I'm not being replaced. Well, um, yeah, anyway. Okay. Well, that's the only question that I have. Um, I want a con continued fairness for all commissioners and not just if we don't if we say something negative about the police department, that we're not just taken out because we said something negative about the police department. Let's say we say something positive. We don't want to be taken out because we said something positive about the police department or whatever department. So that's my two cents. Sure. Well, I, I can give you my opinion on that as your current liaison, and I would hope that anyone that moves into this position would feel the same way. For me, really, as you all know, I've expressed this one-on-one -on -one with you all, and I've expressed this in our group. This group really has to what you have demonstrated all every single time we have met, and that is respecting each other's viewpoints and opinions. Being able to, again, have a safe space to be candid about our opinions and be able to ask any question freely without, like you said, retaliation or retribution, right? And so I, that's what a just cause would be. If you have a, a commissioner that's combative, or you have a commissioner that's disrespectful, you have a commissioner that doesn't show up to the meetings, doesn't doesn't participate on any level. That's a just cause. I mean, that seat could easily, you know, um, you could have another person in that position that could be contributing, that could be an asset to your commission. I mean, I think all of you know that it, it takes a lot of work for this to happen to move forward. So it can't be one person carrying the entire commission. Everyone has to do a part. And so I think that for me, those are the just cause reasons that I see is you know, non-participation, not attending, not taking it seriously, not providing any constructive uh, criticisms or feedbacks when we're meeting, being disrespectful, not um, um, using vulgar language during our meetings. I mean, to me, those are just cause reasons, and I hope that you all agree in the same. Um, that would be a reason. Um, I would hope that no one would think that they couldn't share their open opinions or questions because that's the whole reason you exist, right? Is to have questions and not framed questions and not, you know, of course there's boundaries because everyone that we meet with, no matter if it's a, a, a staff member at City Hall, whether it's the mayor, whether it's the uh, police and fire commissioners, where it's police department, no matter who it is, you should always address them with respect, right? And you should always give them fair opportunity to speak as well like we have done in the past. So to me, if you demonstrate that, any of those outside of that would be just cause. So, you know, I hope that answers your yeah. question. Thank you very much. And then, Alicia, I have a question. Um, so our terms are one year, but then two year recurring. Does that mean that two years max and then everybody is different? Or what is that? what did that piece mean? Um, so to me, it means that because you have to give a person an opportunity for an outlet, right? Because life changes for everyone. So yeah. you can't assume that they're going to stay on the commission forever. And so I like to provide um, stages where individuals um, are able to say, okay, I'm serving my term or our two years is all I want. So I think one year is important because, again, they're getting involved. They're getting um, immersed into some work that maybe they – either had a clue or didn't have a clue for. So you don't want to overcommit individuals. And I, and so then that first year is kind of like bringing them on, onboarding them, so to speak, right? Gotcha. So you're acclimating them to your policies, your procedures, to the other commissioners, the personalities, the work, all of that. So you give them an opportunity to say, all right, well, it's been a year and it, guess what? It really wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. So I, I respectfully, I'd like to step down. But then after that, it's every two years because obviously if they're in it, involved in one year and they're content, more than likely two years is not going to be a difficulty. Gotcha. But I think also that it gives you the opportunity that after serving two years, I mean, we have 57,000 residents in Berwyn. That's a lot, that's a lot of um, expertise. That's a lot of different viewpoints. That's a lot of different 
um, opinions and, and information that you can get from different individu individuals with different backgrounds, professions, walk of life, all of those things. So I think it's a great idea to keep the commission changing and growing, um, you know, if, if those stages fit well. Because, I mean, obviously, if you're in the middle of a really big project, I doubt that you want to turn over your commissioners and start getting them, you know, acclimated to what you're doing and right. then working on a major project. Right. So th those are kind of your outlets, okay. so to speak. Okay. Um, I have a couple things. Doris, do you have anything before I go through a couple things? No, I'm, I'm fine. Nancy, no. do you have any? thing before? No. Okay. Um, so I do feel fairly strongly, I'm, no, I'm sure that's shocking, um, that all the commissioners should go to training, um, us and any new commissioners that we bring on. Um, I just feel like this is really serious work that we're doing and we need the tools and the language to do it properly. And there are trainings that are offered in Chicago that are, you know, one day, you know, we're asking the police department to do hands-on training. Um, I feel like we really need to do the same. Um, one, so we can serve this community properly. And two, because <laughs> this, the, we need support. We need tools. We need a support system in this work. It, it, it is challenging work. Um, and I want to make sure that everybody is supported. Um, so I would like to... I would like for us to ask city council to approve a budget for us to all be trained. Um, I don't know if we need to put that to a vote now uh, or at our next meeting, but these are just my thoughts for us going forward. Um, also, Alicia, can you explain how new members are chosen? Yes. So the process right now, and again, if you decide to that this isn't um, transparent enough or you feel that it's not a, a, a due process, um, please, again, put something in recommendations for it to be considered and for it to change. But right now, the way, so all commissions and committees are o members are always appointed by the mayor. Um, that's how the city of Berwyn has it set up. But in order to provide some transparency um, and to um, kind of get more of a broader perspective and a spool of people, so to speak, um, on the commission, it's, it's, it's in the ordinance, it's going to say that the recommendations need to come from the current commissioners. So the current commissioners could make recommendations and have individuals submit. And here's where I feel that this is some legwork for all of you, there should be some sort of streamlined process, right? So it's transparent. So whether you ask new, you know, your recommend, your re referrals to, I don't know if you want to create an application or if you want them to fill out a, um, any type of form, or if it's just submit your curriculum, you know, your resume to us, um, however you think that process would be the best streamlined, that's definitely some legwork that you need to think about and come up with. But once that, once you figure all that out, those would be submitted to the mayor, and then the mayor would, from your recommendations, pick the individuals that would replace the individuals that are stepping down or that you know decide to step down. Um, but again, those have to be finalized and proved by city council. So it's not the mayor's decision solely. Um, the mayor would give the finals, and then city council would vote on it and approve them. Um, and that, does anybody have any comments about that? No? Okay. No. Um, and so I think at our next meeting we should address those things and um, take votes on if we're gonna, what kind of funding we're going to ask for and things like that. If that's, I know we've talked about a lot today, so maybe at our next meeting we can, we can do our votes if you guys feel comfortable with that. That's fine with me. Um, if I can add something else. Yes, please. Um, we have 30 days for our next meeting. So in the next 30 days, uh, I ask my fellow commissioners uh, to come up with questions before hopefully the situation doesn't get bad again in October, November with a second wave that's already starting in other states. But uh, being in hospitals every week um, as a nurse. So 
I see what's going on and it's gonna get bad and I'm not just trying to scare people it's gonna get bad uh, it's already bad it's gonna get really bad because the flu season is coming up so you're not gonna know if a person has COVID-19 or has the flu so you're gonna have to treat everybody as COVID-19 so before that happens I want to be able to still continue to meet even if not in person through uh, online so we do not stop for three or four months until springtime or whenever things we want to continue working the city mm -hmm. still needs to continue functioning whether it's uh, at your home or in your office we have to continue working and uh, question our police department our fire department or whatever official we have to question so we don't have a george floyd situation in our city or any other situation with any resident, not only that lives in the city of Berwyn, but anybody visiting the city of Berwyn. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I would like to continue our work. Yeah. I know COVID took a... Go ahead, Doris. Uh, I said I agree also that we need to continue by whatever means that, that we can. I know most of mine would be um, for right now. It would be over the phone or Zoom or something like that. But I'm definitely going to stay connected. So that it's part of, we still have work to do. And I'm, I'm in for the long run as, as long as I can be of help to support the community. That's what I came to do. And um, so I think we should continue meeting. Awesome. Thank Just you. one question. Yeah. Do we know who's staying or we don't know yet? Um, is that going to be determined next in the next meeting in terms of the members? Yeah, I, it's up to, I mean, you're all invited to stay. It's up to everybody if they feel ready to commit. Like Alicia said, it's two years then, two year commitment after the first year. So um, knowing that, you know, I'm going to ask for training and all of that. Like if you have the capacity and want to stay, that's, that's your decisions at this point. Um, I know we had one commissioner move out of Berwyn so that then we need to, we need to find a new member in that case. Okay. So when can we start that I know process? I'm very interested in, in um, Andrea, the training, so kind of get a, an idea of what kind of training you were thinking of? Um, I'm going to do some research. We can discuss that at a later date. We don't have to discuss it all today, but I'm just... Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I like training, but I want to kind of get an idea of what, what you had in mind. Yep. Or what we collectively would put on the table would be something that we can... the training that we can do. Yeah, absolutely. We can, we can discuss that. Um, okay. Do you... We can discuss that at, at our next meeting, if you'd like, Doris, since we're getting late, or do you yeah. want to talk about that now? No, we can discuss it the next meeting. Okay, and we'll yeah, see. any any recommendations from anybody? Mm -hmm. Any recommendations from um, any of the commissioners um, on trainings that you've come across? Um, I did get some recommendations from community members who do this kind of work, so I, I'll send those along as well. Um, uh -huh. And then I do want to address also at our next meeting, I know that there is um, a reasonable discomfort with me being the chair and being white. Um, and I, I want to recognize that. And um, I do believe that we should discuss the structure of the commission um, so that we are, I mean, my, my vote is equal to your guys's, so I really don't hold any more power <laughs> in that capacity. Um, but I've, definitely spent this year reflecting on um, if I'm in a place that a uh, person of color should be in. And so at our next meeting, I would like us to discuss um, the role of chair, if we need one chair, if we want to do rotating chairs, um, if we want to do that by topic or by time period, or, you know, I would like this to be a collaborative thing but I just also want to put that in your guys' minds that um, I would like to make sure I'm empowering everyone else to um, be in this role or for us to all be in, in equal roles. Um, so please think about that and, and how we can structure the commission the best way concerning equity. 
we still would have elections, right? That's what, I think that's something that I'm sorry that you have this conference about me and <laughs> I don't have any I don't I don't even know if I should bring that up, but I, I'm sorry that you you feel discomfort about being in that position, being a white woman. That my position has always been I don't have the time to commit to a leadership role on this commission on this commission because I'm on so many other things right now. Mm-hmm. So that's been my piece, and you've been you've done such a great job with um, all that you've done. I wasn't. I'm just sorry that you have a discomfort. I'm first time hearing that. So. Mm. I don't quite know where it's coming from, but thank you, Doris. I, I appreciate that. I really yeah, do. You've done, you've done amazing. I, I'm not, I'm I'm pretty strong, but I just don't want to take on more than. And I'm in my seventies now, so I have to kind of ration my time, and I don't want to take on any more leadership roles in in any of this. But I, I you know, I got your back, and I will definitely. I'm outspoken. You know that. I'm gonna. I do. I love it. I <laughs> you know I'm gonna do that, but I don't. I think a person that takes this position, whatever, should be in a in a position to give they give the time that it's going to. That doesn't mean all of us don't work. It just means to be in a leadership position or chair of groups like this, you need to be really ready to do that kind of work. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Doris. Well, that, let's let's discuss that at our next meeting and okay. and flesh all that right. out. No Okay. Thank you, Doris. I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And all of you so much. So I'll just add one, um, one piece of food for thought. And that is, um, there is no set structure on how the diversity, um, should be. And so don't, um, don't wrap your mind around the traditional ways that we're all used to a chair or vice chair or whatever that may be. It could be however you all want to set it up and it can change from year to year. Mm -hmm. So if you decide right now the structure works well, but maybe next year when you start your two-year terms or now that you're starting your two-year terms, you want to structure it differently, you're open to do Mm -hmm. that. You're not confined to any particular way to function as a commission. So, you know, Andrea and I have had these discussions in the past about co-chairs or or chairs over topics, depending on how heavy they are, you know, things like that, because each each task requires different time requirements, which means different mm-hmm. individuals have opportunities. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just yeah. kind of keep your mind open when you're having these discussions, or it could stay exactly the way that it is. It just depends on what functions best and what everyone's time mm-hmm. requirements are. Because as Reverend just right. said, some yeah. things really require time, and sometimes <laughs> it's not fair for one person to carry the burden. It has to be shared equally and evenly. Um, so things like that yeah. need to be taken into consideration. So I just, you know, have that candid discussion at your next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. And then right. on that note, I think. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you to our guests for coming. Yes. I really appreciate yeah. it. Do you have any last input you want to share with us? Okay. Can't talk anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you being here and sharing all the information that you have. You guys have been wonderful. You know what I would say is when you have those questions, you have to ask the right people. And that's why I felt important that the commissioners were here tonight to give you the right answer and not the supposed answer, the one you're going to find on Facebook or Google. Uh, and I think that's very, very important that you do it that way. Ask the right person the right question. And then you should get the right answer. Uh, but to, you know, I, I've heard some of the comments, and I'm like, well, something's already being done, you know. And uh, it, it just nobody ever asked that question. So that's the only thing I would caution. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Okay. So on that note, Tony. Can we, <laughs> yeah. On that note, can we get a motion to adjourn? Anyone? I motion to adjourn. Second. Who seconds? <laughs> I second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Reverend you, Green. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Just press the button on your microphone down until it goes off. <laughs>